So in this video, I am going to go over how to reduce uranium lead data from the thermo element 2 using HCalc ML. The data that we're going to be working with is just like any um, user data, any session in the lab. So here we have some user data. In this folder, we have some mosaics, some scan lists, but all we're really interested in is the raw data. So here we just have one session that we run, and in this data folder, we have the completed scan list and this combined file. And this combined file was generated using extract dat, which is in a separate video. These dat and imp files, these will be completely ignored by HCalc ML. All we really need is this completed scan CSV and this combined file. Okay, so that's the data that we're going to be working with. If you watched the previous video, you know that we can run HCalc ML um, using a, a couple of different ways. So here we're just going to use the executable on the desktop. Okay, so here's HCalc ML. So we have new plasma data reductions, and element two data reductions on the right. So there's also a variety of analysis tools and acquisition tools that all will have separate videos um, going over those. But for this video, we just need this um, uranium lead data reduction for element two. So you click on that, and this will open up the data reduction interface. You can size it however you like. To import the data, go to Select Input, and we're going to navigate to that data folder that I showed just a second ago. It's on the desktop, so we're already on the desktop. User Data into data and select the entire folder and really all it's going to look for is that scan CSV and the combined file from extract that. So select that. Okay so you should see the, the file path um, populated here and now just click reduce data. And this should take about I don't know 15 20 seconds to parse the data and then reduce the data. Okay, now we have a, a, a first go at the reduction. There are a few things that any minder or user will need to look at to make sure the data are publication um, ready. First, if you look at this fractionation correction, we have three different standards that we use. Again, I'm not gonna go into much detail here. The main point I wanna make is that we're trying to get these, this swath, this purple swath, um, as small as possible. These vertical bars are 2%. Um, uncertainty, and this is what contributes to your systematic error. So what I'm going to keep an eye on as I do some adjustments to this reduction is right here. So systematic uncertainty for your 6.8 and 6.7. So 6.8 on the left, 6.7 on the right. Okay, so 2% is a little high for, for 6.8, so let's first um, see if we can get that down. The main window you're going to work in here is over here on the top right. So you have a drop-down list of all kinds of different plots that would be relevant to look at. I'm gonna go over just the main ones you really want to look at for the session. The first thing I like to look at are the concordias of the three different standards. So a concordia plot of FC. So you see we have some, some flyers out here that were likely rejected if they're in red for SL. So these are looking a little weird and I'll, this will um, make sense in just a minute. See, so the, the accepted age here is in this green dot. And R33 also looking a little strange, right? So let's do some adjustments to this. Yeah, the first thing that I, I like to adjust is the uh, ACF correction here. So ACF correction of 238 specifically. And so here you can do, we have a, a, a number of different options over here. It's kind of trimmed off right here. You can't really see it. it is right here. So. If you're on a bigger screen, this will say use 235. If you click that, this will now use 235 instead of your 238 measurements, and you immediately see that this purple swath is much smaller, and your systematic uncertainty is down near about 1%. So 
Ideally, you want to use 238, um, but depending on how the SEM is, 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 is performing, you might need to use 235. For this session, I'll keep it at 235 because this is looking pretty darn good. The next thing you want to do is change the, the low intensity and linear 238 sliders. Now you can play around with these a little bit and you see that it starts to change, um, change how the plots look. The idea is to get to this, to get all of these different symbols at zero, because that means you have 0% offset from the known ages for your different colored symbols, which are your standards, and also minimal uh, discordance for your unknowns in gray. And so you can play around with this and kind of do this subjectively, or you can click on minimize offset. And this is going to test the range of low int and linear 238 based on these ranges here. And you can change these if you like to wider or, or narrower ranges, but just click on minimize offset. And if you look closely, you'll see the little sliders start to move. So basically this one's gonna tick over and then it's gonna go over the whole range. And this is just a way to just systematically go through every possible um, option based on these, these ranges here. And so it'll kick off the reduction again. And now you see that we're pretty close here to that zero. So this is actually looking pretty good. This window shows offset on the y-axis and um, the different combinations on the x. That's why it looks so strange here. So if we zoom in here, you can see that that combination right there, negative three and one was the best, uh, gives you the best um, offset. So we're trying to minimize the offset there. And so negative three and one is what is now um, plotted here. Okay, so our systematic uncertainty has decreased uh, yet again. Now we're under 1%, we're doing great. The other thing you might want to look at is the ACF correction for lead 206. Now this one is extremely sensitive. I would say don't change this very much because it's really going to affect your oldest age population, even if it starts to make the younger ages look good. So I would uh, tread lightly with this one and, and talk to one of the minders the other thing you might want to look at are the weighted means for the different standards. So if we take a weighted mean of FC, see we have the weighted mean, if we're, doing, we're actually really close to the known age of about 1099. Uh, this is plus or minus, this is a, uh, one sigma. And the MSWD, we're shooting for an MSWD of one, that means your, your dispersion, your uncertainties appropriately, appropriately represent the amount of dispersion you have. You can add back uncertainty here by playing around with the over dispersion factor, um, but that's, again, that's, that's kind of um, a detail that we don't really need to mess around with. If you look at SL, here we have an MSWD that's really close to one, and, and we're pretty close to the known age. Same with, whoops, R33. So a little younger than the, the known age there. The other thing that you might want to look at is the unknowns. And this is kind of a final check that I do. And what we're gonna do is look at the unknowns and zoom in on these unknowns to see if we need to adjust the 6-4 factor. So you can zoom in here and you just click and drag. And so here, this population is looking a little bit reverse discordant. So what you can do is change the 6-4 factor just a little bit if you change it from a 1 to a 2 and click on reduce data, that will apply that 6-4 factor to the whole data set. And now you see we're sitting right on Concordia and that's looking great. This is really an issue for the for the youngest populations in your in your data set. So you can do a bunch of other things like look at individual analyses. You can reject and accept ones that were that were rejected or accepted. You can take a look at different, um, whoa, that one looks really crazy. So yeah, definitely rejected. Um, you could look at different um, distributions. But what I like to do is just leave it on something that looks nice at the very end. So, oh, let's go back to that SL. So now you see the SL's right on Concordia and that chain, that's because of the, the um, 
ACF correction that we did. So now we're right on Concordia. You can look at the R33. This one's looking better as well. So what I, again, what I like to do is just go to something that looks nice so that when I pull this back up, I know that that's where I left off because we're going to now save this session. And there are three things you'll want to save, but I'm gonna do these all automatically. So if you want to do them individually, you can save the MATLAB session here by clicking on save session. You would load that later if you like. Also want to save a detailed table. This is the old cheap one in, in HCalc, on the legacy HCalc. And there's also a simplified data table. This is similar to the Zircon table from the original HCalc. But what we're gonna do is just click on save all. And what this is going to do is automatically save each of these three, the session, the detailed table, and the data table with the same names and put them in the same directory that we're working in. This way you don't have to type in any names or anything like that. So it's finished. If we go back to the folder that we're working in, go to data, data four. Now you see that we have three new um, files. So we have, a detailed, we have a detailed data table, a regular data table. If you go into the data table here, you have all of your isoplot tools um, that you can use, but you can also use the HCalc ML tools, which you know, those are in a different video. And you also have your uh, .mat file. So I'll explain what the .mat file does now. So if we close all of this out, so now it's all saved, you can X out of that. Say you opened up a fresh HCalc and you want to take a look at where you left off or where somebody left off that reduced your data. You go back into element two, and you're throwing lead reduction. And now we want to load that session. This is going to load, we're going to load that .mat file, desktop, user data, data four. We're going to look for that .mat file. So if we open that, what it's going to do is load an instance of that, of HCalcML and close the blank one. And now it basically, you pick up where you left off. You can go back to say your ACF correction and change that however you like. You can re-reduce that and see what it does to your data and save it if you like a better um, version of that. Obviously this looks pretty bad. And so anyways, that's how you use, that's kind of a, just a bare bones um, first go at, at reducing uranium lead data in HCalc and from the thermal element too.